Good day. Um, it's not so often that I get to come down to Australia, um, so it's really good here to be here. Um, it's my first time in Melbourne. Um, we're moving on to Sydney um, in a few days, um, but yeah, excited to be here. So, read my brain, dealing with consumer subconscious for a deeper insight. Well, what the hell does that mean? It basically drills down to this. Do you really know what your customer is thinking? Basically, customer response is becoming extremely complex these days. You know, um, you are communicating through, uh, to them with digital means, email, you know, clicks. Um, you know, people like your stuff or don't like it. If they don't like it, they'll be on Facebook bitching about your product or service. You know, it's, a, it's really hard to un understand your consumer these days because basically, this is your typical consumer. <laughs> okay, they could be satisfied. They could be confused, angry, but basically they have a blank face, right? This is your typical 2015 customer, okay? And it's also hard to trust their response because trust can be defined by tainted, random, unjust, serendipitous, and thoughtless. It's hard to deal with customers these days, right? And for the customer, they're always thinking, how do I give off a response more easily? So email used to be the ultimate excuse to respond to somebody without showing a facial expression to say naughty things about your product or service. And it, it became a tweet. Now they go on to the social verse and say how, how they like your product or how they don't like your product. Now, they don't even give you a like on Facebook. And you'll be looking at your Facebook feedback and say, I only got 327 likes, damn. And eventually, they won't even respond at all. It's gonna be a nightmare. But, the new frontier, what if you could dig into their subconscious and see how they react to certain things? What if you could extract their emotion and see how they respond emotionally to your product or service? Now, that is not something of 2020 or 2030. There are devices and solutions out there already which will allow you to gain access to people's emotions. Of course, they're gonna to have to wear a device on their hair, I mean, in their head, but it's out there already. So, the diversifying means of communication. It used to be verbal. We used to communicate directly with our consumers. Now, it's going on to nonverbal and subconscious. When you talk about neural research and subconscious and brain activity, the research behind that used to be extremely expensive. You would have to go to an institution or a hospital. You would have to have experts use million dollar machines. In some instances, you would have to shave your hair and have electrodes gelled to your head. It used to be extremely cumbersome. But as I said before, Those devices are a thing of the past. For you, as people who are interacting with your customers on a daily basis, these EEG machines that read your brainwave are becoming extremely cheap, easy to use, very lightweight, and easily accessible. Conrad was talking about internet being around for only 20 years. Look at the world that's evolved now. All this technology is becoming cheaper by the day, and there are, is a lot of hype around this biosensing uh, technology arena. So brainwaves used to be expensive, or brainwave research used to be expensive, as I said, but there are actually startups doing a lot of things in this arena already. For example, there's a company called Emotive. They have a product called Insight. It's about 300 US dollars, more or less the same in Australian dollars, I guess. And it will be released soon, and it will allow you to sort of like train your mental health or your brain, sort of like a Fitbit for your brain. Now, what you saw on Simon was something that we created five years ago. Okay, it looks like, you know, it, it's a pair of cat ears, so what? 
what really matters is that we, we took the technology of um, a company called Neurosky, who produces the headsets, and basically it looks into whether you're focused or relaxed. Now that's enough for us to produce something that is more or less 50 US dollars and allow people to show their emotional state. How many of you have cats at home or dogs? All right. You know how they react to you when they're at attention or when they're focused, the ears stand up, and when they're relaxed, they tilt down. This was actually made by um, a coworker of mine, and actually her, uh, her photo was shown um, on my earlier slides, you know, the three faces, that's her. <laughs> Basically, she's a self-proclaimed uh, introvert, um, and she doesn't really want to react, you know, interact with a lot of people uh, during the day. So she said, why don't I you know, make a pair of ears so people will know when to talk to me and not to talk to me? <laughs> and you may be laughing, but this was actually selected uh, um, by Time magazine um, as one of the top 50 inventions of 2011. So we're not joking, actually. So, where we're going with this, we are actually um, going forwards with this um, in an extremely serious manner. We teamed up with a professor who's been doing um, research around brainwaves um, and how emotions correlate with fr brainwave frequencies for the past 17 years. And we've actually formulated a company around her uh, so she is now the acting CTO, and we have a company called Dense Science Jam, and we are looking into a vast amount of possibilities of utilizing brain waves to allow people such as yourselves understand consumer behavior more deeply. I'm just going to show you a video. Sam, can you lower the volume? I'm going to do some um, Eng English explanation on this. Run the video, please. Okay, so we call this biosignal in innovation, and the five emotions that we could basically quantify is interest, likes, concentration, stress, and drowsiness. There's a lot that you could do when you could quantify the output of these five emotional states of the mind. And this is the professor that we work together with, and We've, we've done a lot of research. So we started off with the million dollar um, EEG sensors like these and said, why can't we implement this into a simple headset such as this? And that's a video camera I'll be showing you later. This is the research tool that I will actually de be demoing today. This is a music app. I have a video later which will choose and recommend music based on your emotions. And Yes, it's just as simple as this. So the device that she's wearing right now, um, it's fitted with a, 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 a special chip. So it's not something that's off the shelf. But we have proprietary algorithm which correlates with the chips, so, which allows you to look into the five emotions. All right, let's go to the next video. Oops. Wait, there we go. Play that. With the volume up? Thanks. So I was talking about the five emotions, right? What if we could look into interest and concentration and have a device that could record interesting moments of your day? So what you saw right now is the iPhone attached to the side of your head. Of course, it looks a little funky. Uh, sorry, it's, it's Japanese, come on. So if we could quantify the level of your interest from zero to 100, it would be cool if we set a threshold at 60 and anything that strikes over 60 automatically runs the video, or records, sorry. You know where this is going.
And of course, every story has a happy ending. All right, you see, you see the word or the name NeuroWare, right? Um, when we started neural research back in 2010, um, we asked ourselves, is it, is it justifiable for an agency to looking into brain activity? And we said back in 2010, that's not really not a good idea. When agencies have access to your brain and emotions, they're going to do naughty stuff. So that's why when we um, came up with this, uh, this sort of like name for our product and our uh, solution. So the majority of the world, except for you guys, uh, know us by NeuroWare, but they, it, it is not associated to, they cannot connect NeuroWare to Dentsu because the, you know, there's nothing out there that connects NeuroWare to Dentsu unless I talk about it. Okay, I'm going to show you another video. What if we could look into like, interest, and concentration and match that so that we could recommend songs to you? Let's run this video. Miko, music inspiration from your subconsciousness. Miko frees the user from having to select songs and artists and allows users to encounter new music just by wearing the device. The Miko system is made up of two parts, the Miko headphone and the Miko app for iPhone. The Miko headphone detects brain waves through the sensor on your forehead. The Miko app then automatically analyzes the user's condition of the brain and searches for music that best matches from the Miko database and plays the selection that fits the user's mood. The mood is shown on the indicator of the Miko headphone. When the user is focused, when user is in drowsy and stressed, Miko provides a new experience which we call Music Serendipity by detecting the user's subconsciousness through their brain waves. Miko by NeuroWare. These are not just promotional videos. This is how far we are with commercializing products around the brainwave research that we've done. And this is what I'll be showing off today. It's called the Motion Analyzer. So it's a combination of the headset and an iPad app. How many of you do you know, interviews or focus group interviews with your um, customers? OK. You know how people are unreliable. You know, they lie. They want to get through a 30-minute session because they'll get 50 US dollars in, at the end. They'll say yes to anything you say. Maybe the end result will be 63% of the people who responded to something said yes. <laughs> It'll be a disaster. But if you could basically tap into people's emotions, this will add more evidence to people's response when you're doing these interviews. There's a lot of ways you could use this. You are getting brain feedback of the five emotions in a quantified result from 0 to 100 each second. Now, this is a versatile uh, research kit that we have. You could add video. Of course, it's on an iPad. If you add GPS, you could do a lot of things. So what we're doing right now is using this research kit uh, for uh, marketing departments who are coming up with a new TV commercial. We have people come in, watch the commercial. If they like it, good. But we want to see how they respond. If it's a 30-second um, commercial, you want to know how they respond throughout the 30 seconds. So there are a lot of clients that we work with who are using this for commercial ads and so forth. We also uh, work together with the FMCGs who come up with a new package, a renewal, or they come up with a new service. They have people come in, take a look at the box or the new product, and ask questions you'll get an emotional response. Of course, if you add video to that, you could go back and say, OK, what was this person's facial expression when he responded with likes and concentration? Or what was his or her facial expression when this person lost concentration and experienced a lot of stress? 
Also, if we add GPS, as I was saying, you could actually have a test driver test out a new car. And together with location, you're getting emotions attached to locations. So you could basically go back and say, why were you losing concentration when you flicked on the lights or something? Why did you experience stress when you stepped on the brake? If you had video, you're getting more visual feedback that correlates with the emotions that were emitted. So that's the way that we're using it. And of course, the traditional A and B test. Be like this over this. But why? There are, so many, uh, there are many uh, customers that produce websites or e-commerce sites that come to us and say, we want to look into the emotions that trigger a like over something. So a lot of talking. I'll show you another video um, that will give you an idea of what we're actually doing with some uh, clients of ours. Um, in Japan. It's a funny video, it's pretty rigid. A Japanese professor has come up with a new technology she claims can read minds. She it says can. the brainwave analysis system claiming. will help businesses better understand their customers' needs. Workers at a major restaurant chain are testing a menu item that is being developed. This device measures brainwaves from the frontal lobes of people who try the product. An application analyzes five feelings, how much they like something, and their interest, concentration, stress, and sleepiness. The new menu item is a cheese souffle topped with kiwi, orange, and other fruit. The app checks the reaction of a person who sees the souffle for the first time. Please open your eyes. When she sees the souffle, the like and interest feelings surge on the graph. This proves the dessert is visually appealing. Now please try it. After the first bite, the like level goes up to 60. That shows she likes how the dessert tastes. After another bite, the like level reaches 80. She really enjoys the taste of the souffle. It scores high in terms of both looks and taste. But there's an unexpected problem. When she tries to scoop up the fruit, the stress level soars to 90. I didn't know where to put the spoon. I felt it was a little difficult to eat. We're Japanese, by the way, right? It turned out it was difficult to scoop up the fruit with a small spoon. So people at the restaurant chain are thinking of serving the souffle with a fork instead. With the device, we can measure emotional changes in minute detail in real time. This is a printing and design firm in Tokyo. It designs direct mail and credit card application forms. The company is using the brainwave analyzing system to improve the layout of its products. The idea is to make them easier to read. During this test, the subject wears an eye tracking device to record where she's looking, in addition to the brainwave analyzing device. Her eye movements are shown by the red dots on the screen. Stress levels are indicated on the graph on the left. Please fill out the form. This is a credit card application form. Right after she turns her eyes to this section, her stress level shoots up. It was difficult to read, as each line contained 60 characters. So they decided to divide the section in two, cutting the length of the lines by half. This system is very useful for us. We can offer a differentiated service to our clients by providing science-based solutions. The brainwave analyzing system was developed by Yasue Mitsukura, associate professor at Keio University. Professor Mitsukura is developing a new device that can analyze a total of 17 feelings 
including satisfaction, achievement, and habit-forming pleasure. We can combine satisfaction and achievement to create games, or we can use comfort levels to design clothes and beds. This system offers many possibilities for different businesses, as it can analyse many kinds of feelings. The new Brainwave Analyzer is just beginning to be used in developing products. It may soon become an indispensable tool in a variety of fields. I think 63% of the people chose a fork over a spoon for that souffle. Okay, so just want to leave you with this. If you really want to know what your customer is thinking, we'll be doing demos during the breaks. And we will, if you have an interest, we'll be working together with the Isobar team here in Australia to deliver this to your doorsteps. So, thank you. The thing that kind of gets talked about the most at the moment is what's our mobile strategy. And I don't really know how to express how much this winds me up, but honestly, I think this is going to join the hall of fame of stupid questions that we can ask about mobile. If you can sell things by making women feel good about themselves rather than selling things by making women feel bad and thinking they need to buy your product to fix what's so wrong with them, I think that's really exciting and I think more brands should be trying to play in that space.